Peace family. I mentioned that there was going to be uh, a series of videos I was going to put out uh, going over the basics. This is uh, some crucial information that pertains to private administrative process. Uh, we won't I won't go too deep into a private administrative process. I'm just going to give you the basics, stuff that you really need to know. Um, okay, you can see that. This is a certified mail receipt. Get it from the post office. Once you walk into the post office, they should be sitting on the counter, freely, freely available. You can go pick them up and fill these things out. You send this with your envelopes to prove that you sent something. If you've ever got letters from your landlord, if you've got letters from a lawyer, someone of that nature, they sent it certified mail. This would have been attached. I don't know if you can see that. This would have been attached to the top of your letter, but this would have been removed. It would have been something like this. Okay? Is that backwards? No, it's front. Okay. So anyway, this is a certified mail slip. Once again, available at the post office. And you put that onto your letter. It's very simple how you fill it out. You send it, you fill it out as to who you're going to mail it to. The other portion that just fell on the floor, excuse me, has a sequential number up here. This sequential number you can either write or you would take this label off, you peel it off, and it would go in this section uh, down here. You can either write it in there or stick that tab in there. Now, this and this is synonymous. It, it's I'm gonna say I'm gonna say synonymous, but that's not the right word. But I'm gonna use it anyway. Synonymous. It goes together. It's very very important because you're gonna stick this onto the envelope, and this gets mailed. Not that part. This part here. That gets mailed out. Gets scanned by the post office, the postal clerk, and you get a tracking number. You can track it. You can go online and you can see exactly where it is as it goes to its destination. Once it reaches its destination, the recipient will have to sign for it. When they sign, they're going to sign this piece, which is on the back. Now, this is how it's supposed to look. It's going to be there, and this gets sealed in a little sticky glue, little whatever sticks on there. Now, you address this to the recipient. Who are you going to mail it to? On the back, you put your return address. So once this is presented to whoever you're sending the letter to, they sign that they received it. Most of the time, it's going to be an agent of. If you're sending it to the chief financial officer or the CEO of a company, the secretary is going to sign for it. And they're going to stamp that box and yada yada. If you select certified or restricted delivery, that means whoever it's addressed to must sign that envelope. That doesn't always happen. They usually rubber stamp it, send it back to you. However, this is very important when you mailing out official documents, when you're mailing out payments, you know, important stuff. Now, here's the problem. You might send this certified mail. Let's say you sent a payment to a CEO. You sent some letters to someone and you got this nice little fancy thing on your document. You think you're good. They can easily say, I got a certified mail envelope, but it was empty. There was nothing inside the envelope. So if you're dealing with a court situation where the landlord, lawyer, someone sent you a letter, you responded and you responded certified mail, you thought you were being important. And their response is, we never received a correspondence from the plaintiff, defendant, the respondent, tenant, and you'll say, "I got the certified, I got the certified mail receipt. I, I paid for it. I sent it." Yes, but their argument is that they received an empty envelope. It's certified, but there was nothing in it. 
how do you get out of that? Or how do you avoid that? Well, there's a beautiful thing called certificate of service. What this document can do for you is, I use my notary. My notary, I go to him, and I'm saying this on the record. I go to him, I put everything inside the envelope that needs to be in there. I outline what goes in the envelope. I certify that I put it in, that the notary watched me put it in, and the notary attests to the contents of the envelope. Now, the people that you send this certified mail to can't wiggle out and say it was an empty envelope because you have certificate of service. So these are little things, little tools that we need in our toolbox to fight that big giant out there. Alleged big giant ain't that big. It's just they know the tricks of the trade we don't know, or some of us don't know, but you're learning today. So if you need to send something of importance and you want to make sure that they get it, and that there's no wiggle room, what you can do is do this process with the certified mail. Certified mail, you know, stick it on your envelope. Do the return receipt that goes in the back. And back it up with the certificate of service. There's no wiggle room. This is certified or is notarized by your notary. And you can make a copy and put it inside that envelope and they will not play no games. All right, so this is one of the little tools that Bud Brownsville brings to the people regularly. You would usually get this information on my Facebook page, but it's time to ramp it up and change up how I present the information to you. Another little bit of information is a registered mail. I don't have the other label. The, they used to have a red and white sticker in the post office you can go up to the teller and ask them or the what is the agent agent you go up to the agent and ask them for a stick and they would give it to you free of charge they don't do that anymore because of the importance and the uh, mischievous things that have been done with those labels now you have to fill this out and they give you a number it comes printed on here a registered number which no, I'm not going to show that one because I want to, I'm using that number. I don't want you know put it out there. But anyway, you're going to get a printed number on there. It starts with R E R A something like that with a U S at the end of it, and that is a very very important number. Now, once you go and apply for these things, you may get an agent that tells you this is only for international mail. Registered mail to the private individual is when you're sending bonds, you're sending money through the mail, you're sending something of very something of substance, something of something of value. And when it says declared value on here, you're not going to put a thousand dollars because the check was four thousand dollars, the bond is four thousand. You're going to put the declared value of the paper that you're sending. So the paper may have been worth $3. So you're going to put $3 there. You don't want to put too much of value up there because it may bump the price of this. Registered mail is not, it's not cheap. It's worth every dollar and cent for what you're doing with it. Private information, private stuff. I don't want to you know, lose you when I say private stuff, but there's public and private private and public don't mix that's another video look in my go to look at my archives you know you'll see some videos if not I'm about to do one <laughs> public and private but registered mail is when you're sending important documents very important documents and you need that registered mail number It's a very important number but anyway that's registered mail certificate of service can't wiggle out and say there's a blank envelope or it was a envelope and nothing in it yada 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 this gets mailed back to you uh, I have one here that was sent back it came back from Ralph Izzo so that's how it's gonna come they're gonna put the little mark up there 
Um, it's addressed to whoever it's addressed to. You can't see too well, but that's how it comes. So this is part of an administra or private administrative process. When you are sending out documents like you're doing do not detain, this is how you would send it out. You would send it registered mail, return receipt, um, preferably with certificate of service so they can't say that nothing was in the envelope, what have you. And with the private administrative process, you're going to send it three times. Why you're sending it three times is because you're going to give them an opportunity to answer you. When you send out the first letter, you can send it out. I would prefer you do everything by your notary everything by your witness because that first letter that you send out they can wiggle out or they can easily say that oh you never sent it you got the backup because the next set of letters is going to be sent out by your notary but I say let your notary do it all send the first letter send the second letter send the third so the first letter that's going to be sent out is the statement that you want them to rebut whether you want them to answer to or you want to make a claim or you make a statement and give them a chance to respond to it you give them a certain amount of days where they need to respond. They don't respond, you send out a second letter, and it's called an opportunity to cure. A notice of, of, notice of fault and opportunity to cure. Meaning, I sent you something, you didn't respond for whatever reason. Maybe you didn't get it. Maybe you got lost in the mail. Maybe you're ignoring it. Maybe you don't understand the importance of my notice. I'm going to give you an opportunity now to respond and I'm gonna give you a certain amount of days to respond. You give them a certain amount of days to respond, they don't respond, then you send the third letter, which is the notice of default. The notice of default is telling them that you had an opportunity to respond, you didn't respond, now you can't respond, it's more or less you have stopped. E-S-T, I wish I could write on the screen, I'm not fancy with the, the graphics just yet, but E-S-T-O-P-P-D. It's a legal term for you had an opportunity to speak, you didn't speak, so now you can't speak. I'm not a stopped, it's a stopple, my bad. E-S-T-O-P-P-L-E, a stopple. All right, so going back over it again, certified mail, return receipt, certificate of service. Did you read the back? You're actually going to, I think I went over it already, you're going to outline everything that's in the envelope. Sign it, get it notarized, and there's no wiggle room. This is part of the private administrative process. You can do this with just about anything. It's uh, a legal record. You're having a third-party witness or a witness. Your witness is the post office. The post office is witnessing that you sent this document to somebody. Very, very great piece of legal surety <laughs> all right so this again is a series of, of website uh, not websites of videos that are going to break down some of the basics that you need to know and once we get into other things that you can be and should be doing this will come up again but you have a basic understanding of what they're used for so if you've never mailed the letter certified mail return receipt now you know how to do it now you would know where to get it from blah all right so this is bud brownsville i thank you for your time if you don't know there's a seminar coming up a follow-up to a seminar june 28th it's in brownsville brooklyn 210 riverdale avenue uh, you can reach me at 717-743 one zero four seven. You could also reach me on uh, Facebook, Bud Brownsville. You can reach me at Instagram, Bud Brownsville, Twitter, Bud Brownsville, uh, budbrownsville.com. My email is webmaster at budbrownsville.com. I'm going to continue these series of videos giving you these little morsels of information that a lot of other people leave out. And sometimes I mention some things, but I don't go over these little items as well. But we need to know these things. Uh, you can't answer someone via the phone. You can, you shouldn't. Like if a creditor calls you and tells you that you owe X amount of dollars or they want you to respond to some kind of notice, don't call them up and, I got this notice today, what's going on? No, you respond to them in writing. You have to put pen to paper and you have to have a record. 
unless you record your phone calls, and even if you record your phone calls, if the other party does not agree with the audio being recorded, then it's, it's just a fight there. But you can't deny the paperwork, all right? So let your paperwork precede you. I always say it's better to have it. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. All right. So, little basics. Look for some more videos. Comment. Um, you know, comment. Let me know how you like this video. Encourage me to keep doing it. I'm going to do it anyway. But encourage me. Encourage me to keep putting out these videos. A lot of people come onto my or inbox on my Facebook and give me comments and leave me comments. I urge you to leave comments below. You can go to my inbox and leave me comments as well. But uh, I'm trying to increase my range, my viewership, and I need your help. So if you've helped me before by liking one of my posts, if you've come to one of my seminars, you've called me out to sit down and build with you. Thank you. Thank you. To those that are just watching this video for the very first time, welcome. And again, I'm Bud Brownsville. And I thank you for your time. And I hope to hear from you. Leave me some good or bad comments. You know, you can't have the good without the bad. The yin and the yang. There is no. How would you know what's good if you didn't know what was bad? How would you know what was bad if you didn't know what was good? So bad comments don't affect me. Good comments really don't affect me. It encourages me, both of them. Because if you tell me, if you, if you critique me and say, I say um too much, I already know that. So I'm working on changing that. However, good or bad, leave a comment. Let's build. Build with Bud. Hashtag build with Bud. And if you hashtag build with Bud, Google hashtag, or if you go on Facebook and you do a search on hashtag build with Bud, a lot of my comments, a lot of my posts will come up. Build with Bud, let's build, no excuses. These are hashtags. Build with Bud, let's build. Can't remember more right now. Discharging debt seminar 2017. All hashtags. Look them up, look into me. Google Bud Brownsville see what comes up all right so get to know who i am i want to get to know who you are invite me out let's build peace family private administrative process discharging debt webinar, webinar follow up june 28th 2017 peace